Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be introducing the final type of intermolecular attraction that we want to focus on called ion dipole forces. So we've been talking recently about the existence of these things called permanent dipoles, okay, or molecules or covalent bonds that have a permanent positive, a slightly positive and slightly negative end to them. But then this is going to affect whether molecules themselves are polar um, based on whether they've got these type of bonds plus overall asymmetry um, or whether molecules that lack these things are nonpolar as a result. And we've also looked at this idea of like dissolves like or how polar and nonpolar substances interact with each other and how polar substances tend to interact together. Nonpolar substances tend to interact together but they don't mix with one another like oil and water. That if we want them to interact or dissolve or mix or whatever that we have to force it creatively instead. Okay because this principle is very strong. Um, and also it depends on the character of the molecules themselves as far as you know one molecule can have a polar bit and a non-polar bit but which bit has a, has a greater impact on its behavior as a whole molecule okay and so with this final type of intermolecular force that we're now going to focus on when one of the part, one of the things is actually not a molecule at all but rather an ion like a sodium ion okay so let's say that we've got um, sodium chloride. Okay, so we've got sodium ions, we've got chloride ions um, in a lattice kind of arrangement here. Okay, that they're positive and negative ions that are attracted together. And then we try to take this and we put it in water. Okay, so that what happens is that let's, let's kind of ignore these inside bits of the crystal for the moment. And let's just focus on these and I'll make them bigger. Okay, so we've got a sodium ion and we've got a chloride ion. What happens when we get we put this in water? Okay, so that we have water molecules that look like this, that exaggerating the positive and negative ends slightly. What happens is that when we put the sodium chloride in water, that the sodium ions, which have a po full positive permanent charge, um, as opposed to just the partially positive and negative charge that's over here, what happens is that this we get an interaction, we get an attraction that happens between these two ends. And that then, you know, if we had another water molecule over here, then we'd get another attraction that forms over here as well. Okay, that this is not just specific between the ion and one particular molecule, but actually existing with all sorts of water molecules. That what happens is that this attraction is so strong that it actually, this ion can become pulled away from the rest of the lattice structure um, and become separate. And so that then what we notice is that then if we look at this sodium ion here, that we end up with water molecules that surround this sodium, okay, and that so that each of the negatively charged oxygens is pointing towards it, and the po I keep doing I'm getting my pluses and minuses confused, I, um, and that the positively charged hydrogens are pointing away, so they're being repelled, whereas the oxygens are being attracted, and what happened? What happens if you look at this is that it is surrounded by water. Okay, that that ion has now become completely separate from all the other chloride ions and all the other sodium ions, and it's been surrounded and encapsulated in like this little bubble by water molecules. And that what we notice is we'd actually notice that then this sort of thing can happen to the chloride as well over here. But you can imagine that now the water molecules are all facing with their hydrogens pointed inwards. Okay, and so that our positively charged hydrogens are now the bits that are facing towards it, that the negatively charged oxygens have been repelled, and it's also surrounded by water. Okay, so that is, it has dissolved that those ions have become separate from one another, that the, the lattice has broken apart. Each of those ions has become surrounded by water molecules due to their attraction between the water and the ion itself. And so we, um, if, if we kind of look at 
this attractive force that exists here that we would say that this is an this is ion dipole force that exists between the polar water molecule and the ion of that's either positive or negatively charged and that the water in particular will surround the that ion and helping it to separate from the rest and to dissolve okay and so it's a particular type of attractive force um, that then means that those ions are they stay separate from one another unless then the they attract the, those ions attract one another strongly enough to actually reform a crystal which is like what we see when a precipitate forms is that those ions were originally separate and surrounded by water molecules but as they get close enough to one another their attraction is much stronger than the ion dipole force and so then they actually clump together back together as a crystal and we get it uh, insoluble precipitate forming okay so in this particular situation that we're getting the, the the charged ions being surrounded by the water molecules either with their negative ends or positive ends pointing inwards and surrounding it in order to dissolve it thanks very much for watching bye for now